Hi everyone. So for today, our aim is to prepare a pure sample. We will be preparing a pure sample of potassium, ferric oxalate. Now, before I tell you the procedure and how to follow what all things are there, I will tell you what is the basic things in this. Now, see, you all know what potassium is. Now, ferric. Uh, some of the students are not clear with this. What is the meaning of ferric and ferrous? So, if I say ferric, ferric means a higher oxidation state. Higher oxidation state. And ferrous means lower oxidation state. Us and ik, learn it in this way. You're moving from lower numbers, lower number to a higher number. This is how you can learn it. Us and ik, okay? Going from a lower to higher. So is it us? Are we talking about us here? No, we're talking about ik. That means you're talking about the higher oxidation state of Fe. You know that Fe exists either in Fe plus two or in Fe plus three. So that means this is ferrous and this is ferric. So that is, we are talking about Fe plus three here, right? So I can only write the right one, which we're using here. We will be using Fe plus three, got it? Now oxalate. You all know if I write oxalic acid, oxalic acid, oxalic acid will be what? COOH, COOH, right? But if I'm talking about oxalate, just remove this H and just remove this. So whatever is left, COO negative and COO negative, this is a oxalate ion. I can even write this in this way. This is also the oxalate ion. Okay, so this is oxalate. Now, potassium, you all know. Now, if I actually tell you, just give me a second. If I actually tell you how you have to write, you know, this is a coordination compound which is going to form here. Okay, so it will be like this, it is going to exist like this. Okay, so this is the coordination compound, how it is going to exist. So now if we start with the preparation of this, that how are we going to form this? So if I first talk about the reactions which are involved here, first of all, we have to take FeCl3. This FeCl3 is brown in color. We'll, we will be taking this FeCl3. Along with this, I am going to take KOH which is a palette form, which is white in color. Okay, QH existent palette form. So when this, now see, why am I going to use these things? Because you know that we are talking about Fe here. And I want this Fe OH whole thrice, right? This is a ferric hydroxide that I want. So how can I prepare it? I can prepare it with the help of FeCl3, which is brown in color powder. And KOH are the white palettes. And that is going to give us the FeOH3, that is ferric hydroxide. So this is the first reaction which is involved here. Now, if I talk about the another one, here you have to take now, like this is already prepared. Okay. Now, the another part is that you have to now take Fe. OH3. So now this ferric hydroxide is going to react with the oxalic acid, which you are going to take in this reaction. Okay. So we are going to take the oxalic acid also. Okay. So ferric hydroxide is now going to react with this to form Fe2C2O4, that is oxalate, right? Three. And the water will be given off. Okay. Now, this ferric oxalate is now going to combine with potassium. Just give me a second. Let me first write it. Yes, now this is going to combine with potassium oxalate. Now, if I was writing this like this oxalic acid like this, so if I just remove the hydrogen part from both the ends and I just replace it with the potassium, that is K, that is what I'm talking about. That is potassium oxalate, okay? So this is now going to react with, okay, it has some amount of water content in it, okay? So that will be H2O. That is only one molecule of water is present here. The only thing to remember, you can learn it in this way. Oxalic acid was having 
two water molecules in it, right? Now, because it is just looking like this oxalic acid, but you're just removing these hydrogen and replacing it with the potassium ions here. So you will have one water molecule, okay? So when they are going to react, they are now going to give us, okay, the main thing that we have written here, the last product that we got. So three water molecules will be there. I've not balanced this. I've just written it, okay? Just balance it, whatever, like the number of oxygen, hydrogen, uh, ferrous ion on both the side, you can balance the reaction, okay? Now, after balancing the reaction, like I think now you all get to know that how do we write it, right? Now, for doing this experiment, like obviously material required are I think now clear to all of you. Here, we will be using FeCl3. That was the one thing, right? FeCl3. And with that, we have used KOH. So that means this. That means we will be preparing one solution of this FeCl3 and one solution will be prepared of this KOH. So we will be weighing FeCl3 accordingly and KOH. Now, if I talk about how much to take, Always remember FeCl3 and KOH, like if I talk about the equimolar amount has to be taken, so their molecular mass is too much and we don't want to prepare that much, right? Obviously. So if we take uh, them into consideration, like their equimolar masses, so we will be taking them in the same ratio as their molecular masses. So we can prepare this somewhere around 3.5 gram, or you can also take it as 3 gram. And this KOH as four gram, okay, four gram. You can separately prepare this 3.5 gram with 50 ml of water in it, okay, and separately prepare this in 50 ml of water again, okay. Now, after preparing this and this separately, what you will notice is I will be telling each and every small things, whatever is there. When you will prepare this solution, you will notice that it is exothermic. Okay, so not just the acid reaction with the water is exothermic, but obviously the reaction of base with water is also exothermic. So when KOH pallets will be dissolved in the water, it the beaker where you're forming this will also become hot. Okay, so let's get back to the point. And this was just to tell you. Yeah, now after preparing these two solutions, now what you can do is just take a bigger beaker or you can just simply add the second one in this one. Okay, and or you want, if you want to mix them another one, you can mix in the another one as well. Okay, so if I say in this, you were having FeCl3 and you're now adding KOH to this, okay? You have to add it in small amounts with constant stirring, okay? Constantly you have to stir it and then you have to add, okay? FeCl3 is already there and you have put KOH from the another one, okay, KOH you're adding. So add it in small installments and quickly stir it, okay. After formation of this, now, you know, this compound which you have prepared here in this, if I write it as A, here the compound which you have prepared is now ferric hydroxide. Now what you have to do is just take a funnel, have the filter paper in it, take a beaker where you can just filter out the content, just place your filter paper here and just filter out whatever stock solution you've got. I'm calling it as a stock solution. I'm really sorry for this. Just wait. Hmm. So just take this A container and whatever solution that you have prepared, pour it into this. Now, what you will notice is whatever impurities will be there. We are doing this filtration. Even if you will not do it, it's not at all a problem, but why we are doing it so that we can get a pure compound, right? So all the other things will pass down through this and the main component that we want, which is ferric hydroxide will be left. Now, to be very sure that this ferric hydroxide that you've prepared is pure, just wash it off again with some water. On the sides of this filter paper, add water so that another impurities, if there is any sticking to it, can also come down. And you will get this FeOHC. Now what you can do, just take a china dish or any other dish in which you can take this, okay? Now take your content. Okay, I'll draw it with the color, the same one with the color it is. 
So it will be uh, this FeOH3 will be brown in color. Okay, just keep it aside. Now we will be preparing the another part. Okay, I hope this part is clear to you all. Now the next one that we have to prepare is a oxalic acid plus potassium oxalate solution that we have to prepare. Okay, now. This will be in the hydrated form because it has two H2O, but obviously it is not be it is not going to be in a liquid state. It, these are also in the crystal forms. Okay, so just take some amount of it and amount. If I actually tell you, have to take somewhere around four grams. Again, the equimolar amount I'm taking of this oxalic acid and potassium oxalate because if I will be taking their molecular masses, the amount that we are going to prepare will be a lot, and we don't want to prepare that much of it right so just take four gram of this and in the same proportion we will be taking potassium oxalate which will be 5.5 grams okay now you don't need to prepare them separately you can also prepare both of them at one go just add four gram of oxalic acid 5.5 gram of this potassium oxalate add to this add to this 100 gram of water in 100 gram of uh, 100 ml of water you can add this okay after adding this now okay i'll be calling this as solution b okay now you have the solution a and you have the solution b okay this one is of oxalic acid plus potassium oxalate right and this one was of feoh3 right now we have got both of these now you have to take a spatula and by that just add a little amount of this A into the B and just mix it, okay? Properly mix it until you get a pale green to a green color of solution. And if you feel that you're not getting this green color, you can even heat it. And uh, what I have noticed is that you don't need to even require to heat it. It will go pale green without even heat. But if you still feel that it is not going green, you can heat it also, okay? And after heating it, now what you can do is just filter this prepared solution also again, the same process through the funnel, have a filter paper in this, a beaker to take the content. Impurities will be left here. Okay. And you will get your solution here. Now, put this solution in the china dish over the wire gauge on a tripod stand. Okay. On a tripod stand. Now, just heat it. Now, up till where have to heat it? Where Up till where do you have to heat it? Up till what temperature? That is a main point here. Now, the crystallization point. Now, if I say crystallization point, now you will say, ma'am, how will we get to know that which is the crystallization point here? So, just heat it for 10-15 minutes. Use a stirring rod, just put it inside and just blow dry that. If you find some collection over the stirring rod, you get to know that okay this is a point where i have to stop okay just put this china dish after uh, just take it off from here and put it down and now don't directly put it uh, into the water <clears throat> into the cold water i'm really sorry just simply put it at room temperature for uh, one two minutes three four minutes even and after putting it at room temperature when it has actually the temperature has actually fallen a little down then you can have a cold water trough okay in cold water trough now what you can do is have some cold water and there you have to put your solution okay as you will put your solution prepared here the next day when you will come and see is that you will get green color crystals and when you will notice the color of the crystal, obviously they will be green in color because the solution prepared was also in green color, right? Okay, so the one important question here is that what is the coordination compound formed here? So you all should be aware of this formula. Okay, and obviously the name, that what is the name of it? So it is potassium trioxalato-ferrate and this is water, okay? Okay, let me ask a few more questions which can be helpful for you. Okay, yes, I'll write the name of this if you want to write it, okay? This will be potassium tri 
oxalato trioxalato because the oxidation state of fe is 3 so i have to mention here 3 Okay, I've not written ferrate now. Wait, wait, wait. Trioxalato. After that, this is ferric, right? So it will become ferrate. Ferrate. Now the oxygen state is three, right? After that, how many water molecules are there? Three. So just mention the amount of water also. Three water. So this is the IUPAC name of this complex, which is potassium tri. Tri is for three. trioxalate trioxalato ferrate 3 three water molecules are there this is the oxidation state of fe okay okay now one more question that could be why is this complex paramagnetic why is this complex paramagnetic this is paramagnetic because you know that d 3d is used in the filling of fe right so this is paramagnetic due to the presence of five unpaired electron in the 3d series okay that is the reason of this complete compound being paramagnetic because paramagnetic means what when you do when you have the unpaired electron when the pairing is not done right and because of this this will be paramagnetic this ferric is paramagnetic here okay okay yes one more question that could be asked here is that what is the geometry of the crystals that will be formed here so it will be octahedral okay that will be octahedral like in if i tell you alum when we have prepared alum we got the octahedral geometry in the same way here also octahedral geometry will be formed the color of the crystal i have already told you it will be green okay so this is it for today i hope you have get to learn something new we'll be meeting up in some another upcoming videos and we will be learning some more new concept till then take care bye bye all of you have a good day